welcome to your trombone lesson on page five in your sound innovations book. So make sure you have your trombone all put together. Make sure you watch through the first video on how to put it together, how to get a sound out on it, and have your book opened up to page five. How these lessons are gonna work is you're gonna see, whoop, point the other way, over here, you're gonna see your music displayed right on the screen, and then right in here, you're gonna see a picture in picture of me. So I can demonstrate some things and you can see if I need to show you anything. The other thing is I can write on the screen, so when I'm talking about certain things, I can circle them on the page, and when you're playing along with me or any of those things, you can actually see the page. Now, the couple of nice things about this is because it's in video, I'm gonna play through each example of song once. That allows you to play along with me. You could either listen to it first and follow along so you kind of see how it sounds, or you can try to play along with me the first time, then pause it, work on it on your own, and then you can back it up and then play along with me as many times as you want, or you can just keep backing it up and play along with me all the time. So lots of ways to practice, which is gonna really help out. Especially on trombone, if you can hear the notes, it does make it a lot easier. All right, so the couple of new things at the top of the page here is the first is you have bass clef. That is the clef you play out of. It is also known as the F clef because if you see that little circle right there, that sits right on the F line. And if you remember what we've talked about in band, remember the saying for line notes is good boys deserve fudge always. And you'll see that little circle sits up on that fourth line, which is the F line. That is why it is called an F clef. So remember, good boys deserve fudge always. Not a big fan of that saying, but go ahead and make up your own if you want or use that one. Doesn't really matter. Then the other one to remember the notes in the space is all cows eat grass. That will help you remember the notes in the space. So if you can remember the saying, all cows eat grass, and good boys deserve fudge always, or you make up your own sayings, you can remember every single note on the staff that you need to know. Help make it a lot easier for you. And it will take a little time to remember. The next thing you see kind of looks like a fraction. It's a four over four. This is called your time signature or meter. It tells you how many beats are in a measure. When you see a four on the top and a four on the bottom, that means there are four beats in a measure. The top number tells you how many. And then the bottom number tells you of what. So whenever you see a four on the top or a two or a three, that tells you how many are in a measure. But you need to know how many of what. So whenever you see a four on the bottom, that means a quarter note, which we're gonna learn in a few pages, and a quarter note gets one beat. So there are four one beats in a measure, so four beats in a measure. This is the one you're gonna see quite a few times. Get that erased. Okay, so that takes care of that part. Now we're gonna move over to the top right here. So the next thing you're gonna see is that circular looking note, which is called a whole note. A whole note gets four beats. So you hold it out for four beats. Now when you think about it, you're gonna say ta, a, ah, ah. If you notice, ta, ah, ah, ah. One, two, three, four. That's going to help you in holding that out. And I'm going to show you that in just a second and how you can figure that out. The next thing you're going to see is this little rest right there. That is called a whole rest. What you're going to notice is it sits under that line just a little bit or looks like kind of a hole in the line. Whenever you see that kind of rest, it gets four beats. So instead of playing for four beats like you see on a whole note, you're resting for four beats. So it's just flipping it around a little bit. Now we're going to look down at the song called Our First Note. And our first note is note D. And you're going to see this picture of the trombone below it. That shows you where to put your slide. Help if I take my slide lock off. So it tells you where to put your slide because the way a trombone changes notes is by moving this slide in and out. Now you notice I got a black trombone, it plays exactly the same as all the other ones. Now to get to the fourth position, if you see there's a little four right there, that's the position for D. So each place you put your slide is called a position. 
So when it's all the way in, that's called first position. When it's just out a little bit, it's called second position. Each position is a little further out. There are seven positions. So that's kind of the nice thing about trombone. You're not remembering a lot of crazy fingerings and valve combinations. You just have seven places to put your slide. Now, at first, you're really going to have to think and possibly even look where you have your slide. Eventually, you'll notice as I move the slide, my arm, my elbow bends different lengths. You're going to get what's called that muscle memory, where your muscles remember. If you remember when you started eating and was learning how to eat, you had to think about picking up your fork, holding it the right way, putting it in your food, putting it in your mouth. Now you can just shovel away. You don't have to think about it. Same idea with trombone. I've played it long enough, I just know, oh, that's first position, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. My arm just remembers the muscle memory for where each one is. I don't have to sit there and look at where my slide is every single time. So that will take time, but you will get to that point. At first, you're going to have to spend time looking where your slide is. But there are some cool tricks. So for fourth position, you'll notice when you pull your slide out, let's see if I can get there. It's kind of hard to see with the black, but you'll see this big, thicker, shinier part right there. When the end closest to you lines up with the edge of your bell, that is fourth position. So your slide starts all the way in. When you pull it out in the end of the slide that's closest to you is lined up with your bell. That is fourth position. The other way is when you're holding your slide, your thumb sticks out a little bit. So you want to be just past, your thumb needs to be just past the bell. You'll notice that my thumb is out a little bit. It's not even with the bell, it's not way out, it's just past the bell. But the easiest way is with the back end of the slide is lined up with your bell. That is fourth position. And I'll, you'll hear it now. That is your note D. So your D note is in fourth position. And you're gonna see here there's a whole note, then you rest for a whole rest, Whole note, whole rest, whole note. So you hold for four beats, rest for four beats. Now when you rest for those four beats, you're going to count rest four times. Rest, 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 rest. So watch how I play this now. To start a note on your trombone, remember we talked about the just getting the sound out the other day. Now, to get the sound out properly, if you've ever had a piece of food or like a piece of corn stuck on the tip of your lip, and you go <laughs> using a T sound to blow your air like a two. That's what you're going to do through the instrument. And if you notice for the counting, ta, ah, 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 tu, u, ah, ah. You get that T sound in the start of your first note. I'll just erase those. Listen. You can hear the ta. You don't have to do that, but that's how you count your note. Ta, rest, 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 rest. Ta, rest, 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 rest. Ta, and that's how you go through the song. So let's get your trombone out to fourth position, end of the slide, even with or even with the bell. Get the trombone up. Now make sure you're not sticking the trombone way up. Make sure you're not dropping it way down. It's just kind of straight out or just a little down. And that's the proper position. So here we go. We're going to try our first note together. Now, when I get ready to start you off, I'm going to go one, two, ready, go, play. So I will always do a count off before we play. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Rest, 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 rest. our first note. Again, feel free to pause the video, go back and practice it, or back it up a little bit and play along with me a bunch of times until you get it down. You don't want to move on until the next song. This is the rule for the book. Don't move on to the next song and especially the next page until you can play all the songs on the page well. And don't move on to the next song until you can play that song well. Okay, so keep practicing that first note. Let's go down to our second note, which is C. For you, C is going to be as far out as you can comfortably reach. 
You may not be able to get that far out. As your arms get a little longer and you get a little bigger, you'll be able to properly get out to that six position. So right now, your six position is far out as you can reach, okay? So here is our second note, which is note C, as far out as you can reach. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Rest, 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 rest. Rest, 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 rest. So that is our second note, the note C. So our first note D is in fourth position with the end of the slide even with the bell. Sixth position is as far out as you can comfortably reach. I don't need you reaching way out, just as far out as you can comfortably reach. Now, what might happen is the note might come out higher or lower than what you were playing when you were playing along with me. So you might play a note that sounds higher or lower than mine. So a couple things you can do if that happens. So if your note comes out too high, so let's say we're playing that D note, and here's the regular D. But let's say your note came out like this. That means your air is too fast. So in order to get that, that note out, my air has to get out about this far. And when I blow, I can feel the air. To get the D out, you want your air to go out about this far. And you barely want to feel the air on your hand. So if your note's coming out too high, make your air slower. If your note comes out too low, comes out like that instead, what you want to do is make your air a little bit faster. So instead of your air to get that low note out is probably only going about this far. You want it to go out a little bit further. Okay? Remember, when you breathe in, don't raise your shoulders way up like this. Keep nice and relaxed. You want to keep your shoulders down and relaxed. Don't get them all raised up. So if your note comes out too high above what I'm playing, slow your air down. If it's coming out too low, speed your air up. It'll take some practice. It may not happen in the first day or first week or two. It might take a couple of weeks for you to get used to that. The more you practice, the better you will get at it. All right, now we're going to look down at two-note tango. In two-note tango, it's switching between your D and your C. So remember, your D is on the third line. Your C is on the second space. So your D is fourth position. Your C is sixth position. All right, here we go. Two-note tango. So get out to fourth position. One, two, ready, go. Rest, 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 rest. Rest, 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 rest. Rest, 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 rest. Rest, 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 rest. That is two note tango, so it's going from your fourth position to your sixth. It's taking turns. Every note changes between one or the other. All right, the final note on the page, B flat. My picture's cut off a little bit, but this is the easiest position on trombone. If you remember, I said first position is with a slide all the way in. That's your B flat. It is in first position, okay? So pull your slide all the way in. And let's do your B flat again, all whole notes. One, two, ready, go. Rest, 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 rest. Rest, 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 rest. And that is your first three notes on trombone. So your B flat in first position your C in six, which is as far out as you can comfortably reach, and your D, which is in fourth position with the end of your slide that's closest to you, even with your bell. Get good at these three notes, and then you can move on to the next page. So I will see you as you move over to page six.